guys you know please confirm to me all of you me why on screen those are attending in online guys please confirm to me all of you me why on screen those are attending in online hello Guys, you know, please confirm to me. All of you with my voice on screen, those are attending in online. Am I audible, guys? Now, please confirm to me. All of you with my voice on screen, those are attending in online. Right. All right. Good evening, guys. I said very less members today. IPL matches weekend. So weekend in the sense for software engineers is a convention, right? Weekend and weekend a half and all, right? I think you are all software engineers now, right? No. <clears throat> right, sir. And uh, I think I'm giving clarity for you. So first few uh, days of time, that means first few weeks of time, no classes on weekends. That means on Sunday only. Gap I will provide uh, as a all together. Clearly I'm telling to you. Before whoops, no classes on Sunday. Once if I start a whoops topic, on Sundays also we are going to have classes. Why? Because we are dealing with Java, not like any other programming languages. Other programming languages syllabus and content is very small. So they can take holidays on Saturday and Sunday also no issues or per week in some institutes might be they are giving clarity per week only three classes per week only four classes the type of tradition is going on right. But in Durga soft we are dealing with Java majorly our content is more and more more content we have to deal and I'm, I'm telling you clearly you are able to get unbelievable content. The huge content I'm going to cover part of this Java. So if you want to cover that much of huge content, then we have to work more. Our soft time is not sufficient. We have to work more per week. In general, people are thinking about it uh, like what there may be five days or six days or six hours, seven hours like this. We are thinking now, right? But as of now, uh, before whoops might be then few weeks of time. Uh, maybe on Sunday I'm able to give holiday, but once if I start object orientation on Sundays also we are going to have sessions. Now somewhat uh, what I'm telling the extra sessions I'm going to take. It's like minimum three hours of time I'm going to take minimum. Okay, but that that plan is available, but that I will provide you in the future, not immediately. But let me moving on to the content here. Then once if I start object orientation, then we are able to start our content. Okay. Right, sir. That is one thing. And uh, you are not aware about it. Now, at least the six o'clock time is somewhat better as per the season in outside. Some people are attending my classes there right from three o'clock onwards. Now they are continuously coming to the classes. Regularly they are coming to the classes. Even I give an information to them. All right, the outside situation is totally different. If you want to attend in online, I can give the online classes support. They said to me strongly, "No, sir. We want to come to offline class only." Even though that situation is a heart in outside, we don't want to bear uh, mind about it. Just we want to come to the classes now. Yeah, they, they have very good interest on it. Understand it now. So we are also we have the same uh, same theme maybe in the future. Okay, right, sir. But we can expect more classes on weekends in the future, not immediately. And this is one thing. And one uh, small schedule related information I'm telling to you. So tomorrow is a Sunday. It's okay. Then I, I decided I want to give gap as I said to you already. I think Monday there is a festival. I think so. Holy festival is going on Monday. Okay, but I think so half of the festival is on Sunday remaining half of the festival is on Monday. Then majority of the people they are thinking to celebrate on Monday actually. Understand it. Why? Because Sunday evening festival nobody will celebrate it. Of course Sunday evening festival is different. That's okay. Understand it. No? Uh, Monday morning that festival will come that's why most of the people they are trying to celebrate on monday morning that is one thing but actually these are not the reasons actually sunday i decided i want to give holiday monday onwards i need to take the class now 
but unexpectedly i have some small program at my home so we are myself i am shifting the house actually i have a house shifting program actually so because of that reason i need to take might be three days of gap so tomorrow is likely sunday it's okay monday and tuesday monday is anyway festival and tuesday extra one day i want to take gap so if i complete today's session we will have the class on wednesday next to class understand it now, what i'm telling to you but don't let these are requests this time only okay maybe in the next upcoming weekends we'll plan for it extra sessions again maybe maximum one class is a pending on monday i can give the holiday as per this holy and tuesday i'm going to take extra day wednesday onwards we are going to have classes okay please remember this schedule tomorrow day of tomorrow next day three days of time gap next one next class will be on wednesday try to follow up this try to attend for the content okay fine all right sir now <clears throat> let's uh, move on to the content what we completed actually what content here we completed in the last class if you understand it right sir. and uh, right i think so we are discussing about like what then what topic we are discussing differences between java and others and the differences between java and others overall three differences here we have discussed there what are the three differences we completed first one is what their c and c plus plus are static programming languages but java is what their dynamic programming language tell me how can you say that c and c plus plus are static and java is a dynamic what is the reason here first of all what is static programming language if any programming language follows static memory allocation, then the programming language is what there? Static programming language. In a C and a C++, memory allocation is going on at what time here? At a compilation time only. So C and a C++ are what there? Static programming languages. All right. What is dynamic programming language? All right. If any programming language follows dynamic memory allocation, then the programming language is what their dynamic programming language java is the best example for it in java memory will be allocated for the primitive data at the runtime only not at the compilation time long. right sir java and python are the best examples for it next point is what their pre-processor is required in c and c plus plus but pre-processor is not required in java so what is pre-processor and what is its role first we have to understand Preprocessor is the first phase. Preprocessor is what there is a first phase in the compilation. What preprocessor is able to do actually? Preprocessor, preprocessor will recognize all the hash include statements and load all the header files content to the memory. That's the job of the preprocessor. We know already inside the C and the C plus plus that library is available in the form of header files. If you want to include that library into the C and C++ programs, we have to use hash include statements. If you compile C program, preprocessor will recognize hash include statements. Preprocessor will take the header files names. Preprocessor will check whether these header files are available or not. If they are not available, preprocessor will raise an error. If they are available, preprocessor will load the header files content to the memory. Loading predefined library to the memory at a compilation time, then it is called as what there? Static loading. Preprocessor is following what there static loading. That's a punch here. After completion of this static loading and all the content here, then what next one can we are going to understand? Right, why preprocessor is required inside the C plus plus no to recognize hash include statements in order to load all the heterophiles content to the memory. We it is mandatory to have what there preprocessor. But in Java, preprocessor doesn't require. Why preprocessor is not required in the case of Java? What is the content here? No. In Java, the complete predefined library was provided in the form of classes and interfaces in packages. To include packages into the Java program, there we have to use import statements. If we compile any Java program, then compiler will perform some actions. Compiler will recognize all the import statements. Compiler will take all the package names and compiler will check whether these packages are available or not in Java software. If they're not available, compiler will raise an error. If they're available, compiler will not raise any error. At the same time, compiler is not responsible for loading any predefined library to the memory. 
if compiler is not responsible for loading predefined library to the memory then who is responsible for loading predefined library to the memory at runtime of the application jvm is responsible for loading predefined library to the memory in java predefined libraries are loaded at runtime by the jvm so java is following what loading dynamic loading loading predefined library at runtime is called as what there dynamic loading this is a point here what we are understanding after completion of this in conclusion in the case of java preprocessor is not required why because in java hash include statements are not available and in java <coughs> header files are not available because of the reason preprocessor is not required in the case of java alternatively what things are available inside the java alternatively inside the java what is available hash include that means import statements are available and the packages are available so there is no requirement of preprocessor inside what their java programming language already we completed then after that we have given one important interview question what was that question here we have given there for this particular topic that question is what are the differences between hash include statement and import statement that question here i have given there now tell me some answers here we provided here hash include statement exists in c and c plus plus whereas import statements exist in what there in java Hash include statements are able to include the predefined libraries existed in the form of header files, whereas import statements are able to include the predefined libraries existing in the form of classes and interfaces inside the packages. Hash include statements are recognized by preprocessor, whereas import statements are recognized by both compiler and JVM. Hash include statements support static loading, whereas import statements support what there dynamic loading. In a C and a C plus plus. A single hash include statement is able to include only one header file to include more than one header file we must use what there more than one hash include statement examples are given there three hash include statements and three header files now but in a java a single import statement can include more than one class or interface of the same package by using star notation that's it there are the examples are given there after that the tested we started with the third punch what is the third point here we started there yesterday in C and C++ are platform dependent programming languages, but Java is what there a platform independent programming language Right sir. First of all, what is platform dependent programming language? What we are understanding then if any programming language Listen carefully these points are important no if any programming language allows its applications to perform compilation and execution on the same operating system not on different operating systems on the same operating system then that programming language is a platform dependent programming language clear see the diagrammatic representation if a compile c program in windows operating system compiler will generate dot exe file what is the nature of the dot exe file dot exe file contains directly executable code and it has the local operating system representations like windows representations it has what representations no windows representations understand it clearly dot exe file is as per the windows operating system but to run this dot exe file as per the windows operating system or to run this windows based dot exe file we must provide only the same windows operating system at runtime why because windows based dot exe file is not going to be executed on Linux operating system everybody understand my point clearly. so on any other operating system it is not possible to execute this windows based dot exe file we must provide the same windows operating system only because of that reason in the case of C programming language runtime operating system is dependent on the compile time operating system so C programming language is dependent on the operating system due to that reason we can conclude that C and C++ are what there platform dependent programming languages all right similarly <clears throat> why java is a platform independent programming language or before that what is platform independent programming language that we have to understand if any programming language allows its applications to perform compilation on one operating system and execution is on another operating system Compilation is on one operating system and execution is on what there another operating system then that programming language is called platform independent programming language Compilation is on one operating system and execution is on another operating system then that programming language is platform independent programming language 
examples for platform independent programming languages are java python and so on good how java is a platform independent programming language let us understand the points here if we compile java program on windows operating system dot class files are generated please remember this in a c and c plus plus we are getting dot exe files but in the case of java we are going to get what files now dot class files then what is the nature of the dot class file what is the nature of the dot class file now look carefully dot class files contains byte code dot class files contains what there byte code it is not directly executable code it is a byte code it is not directly executable code then what next one it is an intermediate code and it doesn't have any it doesn't represent any operating system representations including what there windows and some my point here dot class files contains byte code it is not directly executable code it is an intermediate code and doesn't represent any operating system representations including what there windows understand it clearly right so dot class file is generated like this fine but the point is what this is a neutral byte code it doesn't have any operating system representations if you want to execute this neutral byte code on linux we require linux representations of the byte code if you want to execute that neutral byte code on solaris solaris representations are required inside the byte code similarly mac representations and windows representations exactly in this particular situation to make java is a platform independent programming language to make java is a platform independent programming language and what next one here to make java is a platform independent programming language and to run java program on multiple operating systems sun microsystems has provided converters to translate the program from neutral byte code to the local operating system representations how that converters are provided by java sun microsystems has provided that converters along with the execution process only in a single component sun microsystems has provided this conversion and execution both in a single component the single component is nothing but what there jvm java virtual machine right sir so java is a platform independent programming language because of jvm only but jvm is what their platform dependent programming language and here itself i am telling to you converters are converting that neutral byte code to the native code your native code is what their byte code with the local operating system representations byte code with the linux representation that is native code here native code is what there byte code with the solaris representations here native code is what there byte code with the mac representations here byte code is what there the byte native code is what there byte code with the windows representations it will convert from byte code to native code the native code will be executed by execution engine and it able to generate some outputs directly right sir this is the conclusion here what we are getting clear right sir the total explanation i given but i have not given document here now we need to provide some document here about this particular point here now try to understand it now the same points again i'm going to provide the same points now try to understand it clearly right sir. now all of you have to carefully if we compile java program in windows operating system if we compile java program in windows operating system then the compiler will generate dot class file compiler will generate dot class file will generate dot class file where the where the dot class files where the dot class files contains what they where the dot class files contains byte code when we compile a java program in windows operating system then the compiler will generate a dot class file where the generated dot class file generated dot class files contains byte code it is not a directly executable code it is not a directly executable code understand the point here okay if it is not directly executable code then what is it next one you know it is not directly executable code after that it uh, it is an intermediate code 
and uh, it does not represent and it doesn't represent any operating system representations it is not representing any operating system representations everybody understand my point clearly now all right so good this is like what they a neutral byte code what we are having there now good in the above context in the above context to execute neutral byte code in any of the operating system operating system then the byte code then the respective byte code then the respective byte code must to have the local operating system representations local operating system representations understand it clearly in the above context to execute neutral byte code in any of the operating system in the above context to execute the neutral byte code in any of the operating system then the the respective byte code must have the local operating system representations all right in the above context in the above context to execute to execute byte code that means to execute neutral byte code neutral byte code neutral byte code in the rs maybe in the above context to execute java applications in all the operating systems in all the operating systems sun microsystems has provided sun microsystems has provided a set of converters sun microsystems has provided a set of converters to convert the neutral byte code to to convert the neutral byte code to neutral byte code to the local operating system representations local operating system representations operating system representations that is native code that is what their native code understand it clearly native code here we are getting it in the above context to execute java applications in all the operating systems sun microsystems has provided a set of converters to convert the neutral byte code to the local operating system representations that is what their native code also carefully sun microsystems has provided the converters and uh, execution process <clears throat> converters and execution process in a single device in a single component called jvm called what their jvm java virtual machine All right sir. now the point is what the main responsibilities of the jvm in java is what they in java applications the main responsibilities of jvm responsibilities of the jvm the main responsibilities of the jvm is to is to translate the translate byte code to the native code and to execute the generated native code only two responsibilities one is what the translation and second one is what their execution that's it now there are the two responsibilities now i'm coming for the conclusion what is the conclusion here java is a platform independent programming language java is a platform independent programming language because of jvm's only because of what the jvm's only but what is the conclusion i'm telling the but jvm is what their platform dependent platform dependent jvm is what their platform dependent one small note i am telling to you everybody understand it clearly also practically proof also not try to understand it no not only jvm the complete java software 
not only JVM, the complete Java software is platform dependent. Java programming language is different. Java software is different. Java program is platform independent, but Java software is what that platform dependent. Say for example, I'm having two laptops. Two systems are available. Computer one, computer two. Platform independent in the sense what we are going to do. First, I have to write my pro say for example, in my computer one, Windows operating system, in my computer two, Mac operating system. Two things are available. What is the meaning of platform independent program? No, I need to prepare my Java program in Windows operating system. Then I have to compile my program in Windows operating system. Compiled it. When I compile program dot class file here, I'm getting. So what I will do now, I'll copy the dot class file from my Windows operating system. I'll paste the dot class file into what there, my MacBook. In my MacBook, I can run the program. This program will be executed. Well, I forget my point or not. But before that, we have to remember for compilation on Windows operating system, we require Java software or not. For execution on my MacBook, I require Java software or not. But remember it, both the Java softwares are not same. The Java software which I installed in Windows is Windows based or Java software. The Java software which I installed on MacBook is what there? Mac based or Java software. But now observe carefully the program what I have written in Java is independent of the operating system, but the Java software is what there? Platform dependent. My program can compile on Windows, can execute in what there? MacBook. But Java software specific to operating system. If you want to install Java software and Windows operating system, we have to get Windows based Java software only. If you want to install Java software and MacBook, Mac based Java software only get we have to install. We should not install Windows based Java software and MacBook. We should not install Mac based Java software and Windows operating system. So all together, what is the conclusion I'm telling here? Java programming language is a platform independent, but Java software is what they platform dependent. Java software is what they platform dependent. That's it. This is exactly the point here we have to understand. Okay, not only this, I'm going to show the proof here now. Try to understand it now. I want to download Java software. So just Google it. Now I will go for what there Java software downloads number of websites are available of course oracle.com is a website no all right sir oracle.com from this oracle.com here we have to download the java software latest version of the java software or maybe any other version older versions here we can download java downloads all right sir now see java 21 is also available not only 21st 22 Java 22 is also available here, that we have to go for it. Hmm, right, sir. Java 22, Java 21, and Java 17 available now. JDK 21 is the latest long term support release of the Java SC platform. In the demo class, I have given some long term support and short term support Java versions there. So, Java 21st version is what there? Late long term support. Java 22 is not long term support. Java 20 is not long term support. Okay, fine, sir. Now, observe carefully. All right, sir, it's okay, but understand this 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 content here. No, this is what their Linux. This is what their Mac. This is what their Windows. Think of it. If Java software is a platform independent, why they are given these many softwares on the basis of the operating systems? Why they provide operating system specific? Understand it here. If your operating system is Linux, then we have to download all this. If your operating system is Mac OS, then we have to download this. If your operating system is Windows, then we have to download all. Sir, get me point or not? So the point is what? If, if the operating, see, if Java software is a platform independent, then why these many links are provided by Oracle Corporation to download the Java software? And they have to provide only one link for downloading all the types, no? Answer my point here. So what is the reason for it now? The reason is Java is not platform independent. Java is not independent of the operating system. That is Java software I'm talking about. Java software is what there? Platform dependent. See, if your operating system is Linux, then we have to download either of this. 
if your operating system is macbook then we have to download either of these if your operating system is windows then we have to download either of these so this point is giving very much clear very much clarity so java programming language is a platform independent but java software is what there platform dependent that's it is it all of you getting clarity or not leave this punch here all right so now let me check for some other content here it's okay no problem this is <clears throat> oracle website from where only we are going to download the required content leave this one the conclusions we have given everything is okay fine all right sir. good not only jvm the complete java software is what there platform dependent first of all tell me what is java software actually in general we are thinking java software 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 what is that so java software nothing sir java software is a collection of collection of the java tools collection of java tools like java compiler jvm java profiler java documentator and so on and so on and so on collection of tools are available all the collection of tools as a single at a single location that is called as what there java software not more than that software is not another one just as a collection of tools that's it java software contains nearly 40 to 45 number of tools their combination their collection is nothing but what there java software let me show this point here for example Mm, for example, JDK. Right, sir. Now, one minute. No, not in webcam. No, just let me show this punch again. I'll show this. Then through that we are able to get some content here. Now where it is known? One minute. Uh, this is map book here just just for information purpose i'm using that but every installation and everything i'm going to show with windows operating system now not to worry for it but now i'm trying to show something to you now try to understand it windows we are not getting it one minute Right so now, yeah, it's okay. Right so now, understand it. I installed my Java software on MacBook that where where it is available in a hard disk it is available at some other location no need to think about it when i install java software see this one two folders are generated here with me what are the two folders there jdk 17 and jdk 1.8.0 that means how many versions i installed here two versions only what are the two versions no jdk 17 and jdk 1.8.0 open the jdk 17 contents inside this contents okay fine home inside this home bin is available uh, now see this one inside this bin all these are java tools in a jdk bin folder is available inside the bin folder all java tools are available understand it 
So inside the bin, this is jar, jar signer, Java, Java C. Java in the sense what there? JVM. Java C is what there? Java compiler. Java doc is what there? Java documentator. Java P is what there? Java profiler. J command, J console, JDB, and so on and so on and so on. All these are like what there? All Java tools. Right. These tools collection is nothing but what this tools collection is what there? Java software. Got it what I'm telling that this tools collection is what then Java software not more than that So the collection of these tools is nothing but what Java software. So here what I said to you Java programming language is platform independent But uh, JVM but Java software is what they platform dependent means that all these tools are platform dependent Take any tool which is dependent on the operating system Yes, sir, got or not Leave this content here Okay, fine. That everything is okay that I given that clearly. Right, sir. Now leave this part here. After this, after completion of this, the total content here we completed. Now we have one important entropy question. Finally, what we completed here? How C and C plus was a platform dependent, and how Java is a platform independent. These two concepts here we completed. Am I clear? Next one is after that, we are going to have one important entropy question. What is that question here? We are providing there. Observe carefully. What are the differences between what are the differences between dot exe file and dot class file? What are the differences between dot exe file and dot class file? There we have to understand the difference here. What are the differences between dot exe file and dot class file? Right, after carefully the very first difference in which programming languages these two things are available dot exe file dot exe file exists in a c and c plus plus whereas dot class files dot class files dot class files exists in a java Point number one. Point number two. What dot exe file consent contains? What dot class file contains? Dot exe files contains the directly executable code. Dot exe files contains directly executable code. Contains the directly executable code. But whereas dot class files dot class files contains byte port it is not uh, directly executable code it is an intermediate code it is an intermediate code dot class files contain byte code it is not directly executable code it is an intermediate code leave this one now tell me <coughs> dot exe files contains directly executable code and it is dependent on the operating system it represents the local operating system representations but uh, dot class files contains byte code which is independent of the operating system means that it has the neutral representations of the operating system so the answer is what the dot exe file dot exe file dot exe files are platform platform dependent dot exe files are what they are platform dependent whereas dot class files are platform independent platform independent dot exe files are platform dependent whereas dot class files are what they are platform independent then one more reason now we can understand it clearly in general dot exe files will provide less security whereas dot class files will provide more security how can you say that less security and more security? You know, there are multiple reasons. One type of reason I'm telling to you C, C are less secure programming languages, but Java is more secure programming language. Java is very good secure programming language, but whereas C and C are what they are less secure programming languages. Understand it now. Because of that reason, dot exe file is providing less security, dot class files are providing more security. That is at one side now. Another point I'm telling to you, I'll be careful. 
so what is this another point here i'm telling to you understand it no <clears throat> dot uh, see in general in outside viruses related softwares are provided in the form of dot exe file maximum viruses related files are coming in the form of what there dot exe file but no virus related file is coming in the form of dot class file it's very simple to prepare dot exe file it's very simple to execute dot exe file in our systems in order to introduce viruses in our systems there but dot class files is not easy to prepare that only java compilers can prepare what their dot class files now understand it clearly so because of that reason it's very simple to introduce viruses through dot exe but it is not simple to introduce viruses through what their dot class files so the point is what there dot exe files will provide provides lesser security lesser security for the data for the applications but whereas whereas dot class files provides more security for the data dot class files provides dot class files provide less security dot exe files provide less security dot class files provide more security for the data that's it these are overall the differences between dot exe file and dot class file understand it no what is the first difference here we are understanding here dot exe files exist in c and c++ whereas dot class files exist in java dot exe files contains directly executable code dot class files contains bytecode it is not directly executable code it is an intermediate code dot exe files are platform dependent whereas dot class files are platform independent dot exe files provide less security for the applications whereas dot class files provides more security for the data right so this is overall c c++ platform dependent and java is what their platform independent programming language so third difference also we can be completed now let us move on to the fifth difference right sorry fourth difference understand it no pointers are existed in a c and c++ but pointers are not existed in a java c c++ are using are having pointers but java doesn't have pointers this is a point so we need to understand something about this particular content so before going to understand pointers are available or not available in c c++ java first of all tell me what is a pointer and what exactly the meaning of the point that we have to understand after that we will go for what there why they are required in c c++ why they are not required in the case of java right understand it no for example if i declare a variable in day is equal to 10 is a normal variable and normal data we provide it a is what there a variable that a variable is going to store what data 10 data a variable is able to store what there data directly 10 is a data right in general variables are going to store data but if you declare any variable to store address locations of the data if you declare any variable to store address locations of the data not the data directly address locations of the data then that variable is called a pointer variable is so, that me pointer not normal variables are storing data directly but pointer variables are storing what they address locations of the data then that type of variables are called as what their pointer variable now i'm giving definition to you try to understand it clearly pointer is a variable it is able to store address locations of the data structures like arrays structure a variable and uh, another pointer variable and so my point here what is this pointer variable actually pointer is a variable that is able to store address locations of the data structures where the data structures may be where the data structures may be may be a variable or an array 
or or a structure array or a structure or another pointer variable another pointer variable that's it now this is exactly the meaning of what their pointer variable let us see this content here then diagrammatically i want to provide this not right object carefully Right, sir. Now let me save this one. In the future, I'm able to use this pointers, pointer, pointer versus reference variables. Okay, pointers versus reference variables. It's okay. Yeah, in the future, I will use this. <clears throat> right, sir. Now all of you understand it clearly. First of all, now I want to declare pointer variable. For example, int a is equal to 10. What we provided here, int a is equal to 10. Next one is int a is equal to 10. After that, int star p is equal to Okay, star p semicolon. Next one is what there? P is equal to m percentage a. Right, sir. Now this is a bit C code, but I'm not sure how it is going to be happen. But as per my awareness, this is a code to declare a pointer variable and to initialize the pointer variable. Understand it now. Observe carefully. When we compile this code, what is going to be happen internally? When we compile this one, first of all, a variable will be created. For this a variable in C programming language, two bytes of memory will be created. Two bytes of memory will be created where the data is what the 10 10 is the data when this memory is allocated for a variable automatically it's a starting address location is going to be available 1010 memory location definitely when memory is allocated address location is going to be created 1010 is a memory location for it that's it this is going to be happen when compile the compile this particular intersection into a is equal to 10 semicolon then compiler will perform this next one is when compiler encounter this what happened immediately p variable will be created p variable will be created the p variable will have some P variable will have some memory. How much memory it is known? How much memory is required to store address locations? That much of memory will be assigned by compiler. All right. This is going to be happen when we provide this. But when we compile this in a section, what is it actually? P is equal to ampersand A. Especially when we provide this ampersand A. Ampersand A is what the address of A. What is that address of A? 1010. That value will be assigned to what variable? P variable. So automatically 1010 value will be assigned to P variable. So P will store what value? 1010. Indirectly, what it is referring actually? Indirectly, P is referring what their address location of the particular data. That is what their A data. So explicitly, if you understand it, no, P is referring this particular location. So this is going to be happen when we compile our C program. That means our particular pointer spot. I said, all of you are getting it or not? Good, nice. This is completed that we can identify clear. So the point is what there? 
now tell me by understanding this total content here who is providing memory allocation for pointer variable is that the c compiler or c engine c compiler when we compile the program only pointers are recognized and memory will be allocated but moreover in the case of c programming language what memory allocation is going on is it static memory allocation or dynamic memory allocation static memory allocation only so at a compilation time only pointers are going to be recognized and initialized are you forgetting point or not so this is going to be happen in the case of c programming language now let me conclude that point here pointer is a variable it is able to store address locations of the data structures whether data structures may be a variable or an array or a struct or another pointer variable good next one is object carefully in a c and c++ applications applications pointer variables are recognized and initialized by the compiler pointer variables are recognized and initialized by the compiler of the carefully that is the nature of the pointer variables okay then immediately we are getting a question one important interview question here we are getting after understanding the nature of the pointer variable why java does not support why java does not support pointers that is a question indirectly i'm asking there why c c++ does support pointers why does java why does java not support pointers what does it mean why java does not support pointers indirectly what i'm asking there why c c++ does support to support the pointers concepts here that's a question now now answer for this question here that's it answer for this question here i'm asking to you know try to understand it clearly very first point very first point now observe carefully pointer variables require static memory allocation pointer variables are recognized and initialized at what time compilation time they require what memory allocation static memory allocation but java follows java follows dynamic memory allocation java follows for their dynamic memory allocation so pointers are not suitable in java pointers require what memory allocation static memory allocation but java is following for their dynamic memory allocation so pointers are not at all suitable in the case of like what their java leave this one point number 2 all of you observe carefully if any programming language which follows static memory allocation then that programming language is static programming language if any programming language follows dynamic memory allocation then that programming language is what there dynamic programming language now the point is what pointers are supported by pointers are supported by the static programming languages but java is a dynamic programming language because of that reason java does not support doesn't support pointers this is one point next one more point here pointers are very much suitable in the platform dependent programming languages dependent programming languages but java is what there java is what type of programming language java is a platform independent programming language java is what the platform independent programming language also carefully this point i want to give explanation to you now try to understand it clearly pointers are very much suitable in the platform dependent programming languages but java is a platform independent programming language due to this reason also pointers are not suitable in the case of java I understand this point here. first of all for example listen listen carefully for the next 5 minutes of time assume that pointers are available in java next 5 minutes of time assume that pointers are available in java they are having allocation at compilation time everything is going on cool okay next 5 minutes of time yeah now understand it java is a platform independent programming language or not what is the meaning of platform independent programming language no 
compilation is going on at one machine and execution is going on in another machine compilation we can perform at one machine and execution we can perform at which machine there no some other machine am i right or not okay let's move on to the points get object carefully i have two laptops now one is windows based another one is mac based for example object carefully first of all i prepare a java program inside my java program i have used pointer variable i have used pointer variable on windows operating system i compiled my program when i compile my program pointer variables must have memory allocation or not pointer variables will have some memory allocation or not part of the compilation so in my windows operating system pointer variable is compiled pointer variable is having some memory allocation in my windows operating system pointer variable is referring 1010 location in my main memory compilation is completed there's an all of you know compilation is completed but java is a platform independent or not once we compile program on windows i can run the same thing on linux operating system or not i can run the same thing on macbook or not so what i'm going to do there i'll copy my generated dot class file inside my dot class file pointer is available that pointer is referring which location 1010 location that 1010 location is available in my windows system that's nice i copied that program i paste the same program onto macbook in macbook i'm trying to execute the program when i'm trying to execute the program when i access the pointer variable always the pointer is referring what location 1010 what is the location which is assigned at compilation time the same location is referred by pointer variable p but uh, 1010 location is free that is assigned by compiler in windows operating system but when we execute the same program on linux on macbook is there any guarantee to get the same 1010 location for pointer variable or maybe is there any chance of having that 1010 location is a free location for the present program execution that 1010 location may have some system files may be operating system files may be existed here but our pointer is referring that location in that location our system operating system files may be available some sense to data may be available so this pointer is corrupting that sense to data or not if it is corrupting that sense to data total our operating system is going to be crashed our operating system may be crashed out and so my point you know so because of that reason not possible to have pointers in the platform independent programming languages why because they are allocated at compilation time at compile time memory allocations are available initialization is available for pointer variable with a particular memory address but when it comes to the execution if you execute the program on the same machine yes that memory location is available it's okay fine execution is going to be happen clearly but when we change the system for execution there is no guarantee of getting the same location for pointer variable that 1010 location may be available may not be available in another computer there directly that 1010 location may be may not be available in the another content here so because of that reason pointers are not at all suitable in the case of what they platform independent programming languages but pointers are suitable in the case of like what they platform dependent programming languages why they are suitable in platform dependent no same operating system same system we are using for compilation and execution process now at compilation time whatever the memory allocation is provided for this pointer variable same memory allocation is available for the pointer variable at runtime also so no problem is going to be happen but in the case of platform independent programming languages at compilation time whatever the memory allocation is available for pointer the same memory allocation may not be available at a runtime mission there and so my point is same memory location is not going to be available at runtime you know so problems are going to be happen data losses kind of content is going to be happen then that location may be some operating system or maybe system files may be existed here it is going to corrupt our system files unnecessarily because of these reasons we can conclude that pointers are not suitable in a platform independent programming languages but pointers are very much suitable in what their platform dependent programming languages clear all right now this is one point next understand the point number 4 listen carefully pointers pointers will provide pointers will provide lesser security for the data pointers will provide less security for the data but understand it here but java is 
a very good secure programming language java is a very good secure programming language it must provide it must provide very good security for the data because of this reason also pointers are not suitable in a java programming language why pointers are providing very less security why pointers are reducing security for the data what pointers are representing actually pointers are representing address location of the data if we catch the pointer variable value we can get the address of the data or not once we are getting address of the data then we can manipulate the data we can delete the data we can update the data we can do any operation with the data so it's very simple to get the data and it's very simple to manipulate the data not only that if you know the address location of the data there i am able to introduce some viruses it's very simple to introduce what their viruses can that's why pointers are not providing security for our data pointers are not at all providing security for our data understand it clearly so but java is very good secure programming language it must provide very good security for the data because of the reason pointers are not at all suitable in the case of java programming language leave it next one more point try to understand it clearly pointers is a confusion confusion pointers is a confusion oriented feature pointers is a confusion oriented feature but java is a simple programming language it must not provide confusion to the developers sorry it must not provide confusion to the developers right now observe carefully pointers is a bit confusion oriented feature why because i will give some reason also but java is a simple programming language it must not provide confusion to the developers because of that reason also pointers are not suitable in the case of what their java let's understand the points here all of you know <clears throat> in the case of pointers two types of pointers are available first one is single level pointer next one is multi level pointer what is that single level pointer actually directly pointer is referring data directly pointer is referring data that is single level pointer but what is multi level pointer no one pointer is referring another pointer another point is referring some other pointer some other point is referring some other pointer and finally some other point is referring data and so my point on p1 refers to p2 p2 refers to p3 p3 refers to p4 finally p4 refers data so this type of Uh, pointers are called as what they are multi level pointers yes, sir got it or not two levels of pointers are available one is what they are single level pointer and second one is what they are multi level pointer if you take multi level pointers now up to one level two level three level is okay developers can trace it which pointer is referring which point and which point is referring actual data that we can understand but if we go for more than five levels more than seven levels at more number of levels in multi level pointers no developers are going to lose controlling over this tracing process developers are unable to trace out which pointer is referring which pointer which pointer is referring our actual data yes sir all of you get my point or not where it is somewhat difficult for us where confusion will be increased where confusion will be increased because of the reason pointers is a bit confusion oriented feature pointers is a bit confusion oriented feature so it is not suitable inside the java why because java is a simple programming language why because java is what there a simple programming language it must not provide confusion to the developers because of these reasons pointers are not at all suitable in the case of java programming language that's it. all of you understand it what exactly the reasons kira given there what is the question kira given there first of all no why does java not support pointers answer for this question is what pointer variables required static memory allocation but java follows what the dynamic memory allocation why 
pointers are supported by C and C++ programming languages. C and C++ programming languages are following static memory allocation. In fact, pointers are also required for the static memory allocation. Both are same, right? Pointers are supported by static C and C++, but pointers are not supported by Java. Next one is pointers are supported by static programming languages. C and C++ are static only, but Java does not support. Java is what the dynamic programming language, so Java doesn't support pointers. Pointers is very much suitable in platform dependent programming languages. C and C++ are platform dependent only, where pointers are very much supported, very much suitable. But Java is a platform independent programming language. Pointers are not suitable in a platform independent. That's why Java doesn't support what their pointers. Next one is after that, pointers will provide less security for the data. C and C++ are less secure programming languages only. When compared with Java, they are supported. But Java is very good secure programming language. It must provide very good security for the data. Java is able to provide very good security, but pointers reduces security. But Java must increase the security. So that's why it's a totally opposite side now. That's why Java does not support pointers, but C and C++ supports for their pointers only. Pointers is a confusion oriented feature. But Java is a simple programming language. It must not provide confusion to the developers. Pointers is a confusion oriented features. Yes, C and C++ are a bit confusion oriented programming languages. It has the features like confusion oriented features like pointers. But Java is a simple programming language. Java doesn't support what the pointers like confusion oriented features like what their pointers contain. Yes, sir, I'll forget me pointer not. So this is the clear cut analysis here we have to understand. Okay. After this, after completion of this point here, in the Java reference variables are available, in the C and the C++ pointer variables are available. Then what is the difference between pointer variables and reference variables? That point I have to discuss there. But to discuss that point, I require minimum 40 minutes of class. Understand here, 40 to 45 minutes of class. I need to talk something internal inside the Java. Our reference variable is going to be created. Our memory management is available. Our identifiers are going to be identities are going to be created for objects all the concepts we have to understand okay so don't worry that concepts i'll discuss with you in the next class now but time may not be sufficient for it no even uh, small introductions also may not sufficient for us no through through a diagram i need to explain the total content here so in the next class i will show this particular content to you know once again i will give explanation for it in the next class i will move forward i will go forward there the next content there no okay right sir now i want to stop here itself this class no I think in the middle of the content only I'm stopping it, but not possible to complete it. So that's why in the next class I will finish the total point here. So when we are going to have next class there, Wednesday, next Wednesday, coming Wednesday, I'll continue the same content. I will complete what the, the content here now. So next two to three classes are important actually, but unfortunately I'm taking this gap now. But as for the intention only, I'm taking this content here. So Wednesday onwards we are going to continue the content. Here. Not to worry for it. Okay. Right, so thank you. Thanks a lot. We'll meet on next Wednesday. Thank you.